Hey everyone, Bass Pro Dean Rojas here and you're on BassResource.com. Uh, we're going to talk about summertime, late spring, early fall frogging and some of the things that I look for uh, when I'm faced with different conditions, whether I'm on a river, a reservoir, you know, or just a local pond, if you will. So some of the cool things about, you know, frogging this time of year is, is when they bite it the best. When that water temperature starts creeping in in the 60s and 70s and 80s and and then into the 90s in some parts of the country where you know you, you're dealing with thick thick vegetation so i'm going to go through a little bit about you know rod selection uh gear ratio selection and obviously bait selection uh for, for different times uh, of you know of different situations that you're faced with so usually you know when the water starts getting you know in the 60s and 70s uh you, you know you, you get a, a lot of you know things that are that are reproducing at that point and that, that what I mean by that it could be you know bluegill it could be a shad spawn it could be a crappie spawn you know a bass spawn there's a lot of life in the water at that at that point and everything is shallow everything is like five feet or less so anything swimming around in that in that realm is probably going to get eaten or get close to getting eaten or chased so that's where the frog fishing really starts to get moving uh, and it's one of my favorite times because especially if you're eating around a shad spawn, you know, or they're, they're, they're eating uh, fry or whatever it might be, a frog is, is, is an excellent way uh, to, to get those fish to, to bite. Um, with so much vegetation in the water, you want something that's not going to get hung up in the grass uh, and even at that time or something that works, you know, naturally through, through the vegetation or the wood that you're fishing where you don't get hung up. And we've designed the 65 Bronze Eye and our Poppin' Frog uh, to do all that to where you can throw it, skip it, cast it, however you want to get it as close and as thick into the cover as you possibly can to get those, uh, those, those bites um, that are hard to get to. So uh, you know, with, with that, uh, the color selection that I like to use during that time of year, a lot of it has to do with the part of the country that I'm fishing in. But a lot of times with that time of year, you want to, they're, obviously they're keying on, on, on bait fish uh, amphibians and, and so forth. Like, so like you could use the whole color spectrum from everywhere from a white to a black and everything in between. It could be yellow, purple, green, brown, gray, you know, red, whatever color you want it to be, you know, and create uh, something and give it life uh, to get those fish to come up and, and bite on it. And so um, I have a, you know, I, a lot of, I, I base a lot of the colors of the frogs uh, on the water clarity that I'm fishing. And so uh, obviously the clearer the water, the more of a clear iridescent color you want to use that, uh, that looks a lot like a minnow, you know, or something in the water that, that's, you know, you know, fishing in and around the shallow area. The darker the water, I tend to go to my darker colors, my browns, my grays, you know, and then, and then I start bleeding into the, in the black. But th that's, th those are for like, for situations where the water's dingy, you, see, you, know, you can see it down maybe a foot, you know, sometimes less than that, sometimes two feet in that range. Um, and so, and then between that and then like the conditions overhead, if we have overcast or you have a thunderstorm coming in or you have wind, you have any of those elements that diffract the light, that those fish make them more aggressive and black is anything with black in it or a dark object, they really seem to key in on that and really eat it good, They're not necessarily just blowing up on it or pushing it. I mean, they, they go to kill it and they go to eat it and that's exactly what you want uh, when you're frog fishing with that. So uh, so fishing the, the different types of, of cover, uh, you know, it has to do with water clarity and water temperature. But you know, the cadence that you want to use when you're fishing uh, in and around that, you want to mix it up. And, and a lot of times you can key on, you know, if you see bait fish in the area and how they're moving, if they're, if they're being scattered or they're, you know, moving, moving around, um, you can use more of a frantic, you know, pace to stop it and kill it and move it around. But that's the beauty of a frog is you can actually watch how the cadence, what you're doing and be giving it life uh, to get them to bite the bait. And then once, they've, once they commit to it, and on a certain cadence, they bite it, then, then you've unlocked it. Now you know exactly what to do. You just want to duplicate that, uh, and that's the way they want it, so that's the way you want to give it to them, is when they're you know, chasing stuff, you want a frantic pace and slow it down if they're not. So it's just a, a deal where you, you can make the adjustments that you need on the water to capitalize on that. 
Rod and reel selection is, 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 is critical for me. I like a seven foot medium heavy action because that time of the year, I'm trying to make specific, um, you know, uh, like I want to hit a little lily pad patch or a little grass match. So it's just a matter of, of you know, fishing maybe a three or four foot diameter and then pulling the frog out and, and hitting the next spot. Three or four feet, you know, hitting the next spot. So it's all about target fishing. But in the summertime, you know, we have these big mats, mats of it can be eelgrass, milfoil, hydrilla, uh, lily pads, whatever it is on the surface, dollar pads, alligator grass. There's so many different types of vegetation on, on the surface that you, it requires more of a heavier rod because you're, you're fishing more in the cover as opposed to like target fishing like I was just speaking of. So there, you know, we designed a 7.4 heavy rod uh, with a fast tip on it that allows you to make the cast and be able to work it on the surface of that mat of cheese, you know, slime, whatever it might be, wherever those fish are in. Um, you want to be able to, when they come up and grab the bait, set the hook and, and pull them out of there. Uh, as we all know, the first thing they want to do is bury in the grass. So uh, when that happens, you just want to keep steady pressure on them. You don't want to rip it out of there. You just want to keep steady pressure and, and, and pull them out you know, as, as best you can. Um, but that heavier rod um, and the 80-pound FX2 Sunline braid uh, is not going to break. So you're, you'll, be, you'll be fine with that. So um, gear ratio on the reels, 7 to 1 is probably my optimum. I would not use 8 to 1 on a mat. Uh, uh, type of presentation only because of the gearing. Um, you know, I, I find it hard and difficult to gather up line as quickly uh, and as efficiently as I would a seven to one. A seven to one has a little more give to it than an eight to one in heavy cover like that. If we're fishing open water, I would say no, eight to one every time. But when you're fishing that that stuff where you've got to winch them out of there, a seven to one's a little more forgiving than the eight to one uh, on that. So uh, personal choice, you know, you, if you like the eight to one, that's fine too. It really doesn't matter as long as you're a frog and that's all that matters and you're having fun with it. So, um, you know, in the summertime, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, we're talking about windows on when they bite the frog. Uh, obviously, like days like today, you know, they're going to be up under, underneath something. So you can see the lily pads behind me, patches of grass. They're going to be in that cover as thick as you can. So you want to be looking for that, um, those type of clumps, you know, of grass. And that's where the target, you know, uh, way of casting is you, you can hit multiple clumps without having to work a big, a big open spans of, of grass because those are the percentages of that's where they're going to be is where there's the most shade and where they can ambush the prey. So you got to physically, you know, visualize it in, you know, in the water, you know, where they're going to be at and then, and then, you know, make, make those presentations. If it doesn't work, you got to try something else as well. So, but uh, water temperature anywhere from, you know, 60, five all the way to 90 degrees they can be you know in a foot of water up there on the bank or they could be out here in three feet of water on this on the clumps it's just it's up to you on where you want to fish in in figuring out where they're at and once you figure them out then it's just a matter of duplicating that elsewhere in the area uh, or throughout the whole lake itself so um you know it's, it's an awesome way to fish. It's a fun way to fish, especially with you out there with your buddies having a good time. Uh, the explosions are, are awesome. But yeah, but thank you for, for, for tuning in to BassResource.com. That's my you know, summertime you know, frogging techniques and go out there and have a good time frogging.